if you want, you can, oh, so, okay. So yeah, so now we are recording. So we are um, starting with a very brief workshop on, on SAS. So the idea is to present a quick, quick guide on a very basic guide on using and contributing to, to OnSAS. So I, I did this very, very brief slide. Uh, I will start with this and then Mauricio will continue with another example. So to put in some context, um, so the development has have started uh, has started in 2017 uh, together with Bruno Bassano and I. We started developing the code for graduate courses. Um, and then in 2018 with Joaquin, we started with some research uh, applications. And in 2019, we joined the some codes from Jean-Marc Batini and Sebastian Toro uh, with some relevant features. And then with Mauricio in 2020, um, including also Marcelo, and we, we started a more, I could say, professional uh, software development uh, techniques. So, I can say that now we are like we have like very very interesting results in nonlinear dynamics, and we have some features that we are currently uh, interested in on developing. So um, the motivation of this talk is to uh, show how to use the tool and also briefly explain how to um, how to make contributions. So the, well, you can you can ask anytime you want. Uh, but anyway, at, at the end, we will, we will continue with some questions or interaction in, in, the, in the workshop part. So in the first part, I will show how to use OnSAS. I will show which is the required software and talk about the GitHub platform, then present two examples very briefly and, and also present a, a real life example. And then in the second part, I will talk on how to contribute to the, to the, to the code and very briefly explain the concepts um, behind the version control. So, so, well, so as you know, all of you know, uh, OnSAS relies on two main software uh, tools, which are GNU Octave or MATLAB for doing the computation. So you can whether download Octave, which is what I recommend, or you can also um, get a MATLAB license and, and do the computations with that. We also use, use Paraview for the visualizations. So um, it is also required that you download these two software before doing the, the calculations. Then as optional dependency, you can also use GMSH, which is a measure. Um, maybe we can open this URL. GMSH is a, is a mesh generator developed by Gusin and Remarkle in, I think it's from Belgium, um, probably if not. So it's a very, very relevant tool for, for many applications in solids particularly. And also you can use some DXF uh, format program, just like AutoCAD from Autodesk or any other that you prefer. If you want to create meshes using um, that format. So first the GitHub, so, so GitHub is a platform, uh, basically from Wikipedia, uh, is a provider of internet hosting for software development and version control using Git. So Git is a, is a tool developed in, the, I think by the end of the 20th century for development, for software development. And then GitHub is like an implementation of that and a server. So it's a service that they provide where you can host uh, your code and use uh, the Git tools in a, in a very friendly manner. So the OnSAS code was transferred to a GitHub repository in 2019. So well, so now we can present the, the URL that you already know, the, the repo is this one. So, <clears throat> So yeah, so this is the, the interface 
of the GitHub platform. I am already logged in with my user and, and that's it. So we can go straight with the first example, uh, which is a von Mises trust problem. So I am on the documentation. Um, so anyway, you can go to the code. So in the onsas.m URL of the source code, you can see the entire content of the code. And also they have kind of social, social, um, <laughs> social um, like stars and, and forks. And so there is kind of a social network um, approach for the software development, which is pretty interesting to get it to, to get the tool uh, known and get other people to reach it and to know it. And here you can see the content of the readme file. So there is a readme.md. MD is an extension for markdown files. So uh, GitHub uh, reads and renders it, renders the content of the MD file, which is a plain text file with some scripting markdown simple format. So in that file, there is that you can see these buttons. And one of those buttons is the documentation. So you can go to the to the main web of the documentation, or you can also see the status of the tests. You you can you can take a look at that in the future, but this is telling us if the current version of the code, which is the master, is passing all the tests that we are uh, requiring it to pass. So we have some validation test, which is this is part of software testing um, in software development. So it changed that we made to the code. We want to be sure that some set of examples are uh, correctly solved. So this this is green, and if there was an error, this uh, this would be red, and would be an error. You can see a license, the current release. So now we are on 0.2.6, and we are added to the Gitter and the DOI. So we have each release automatically generates. Um, a DOI, so I need a digital object identifier. So kind of a code to, to easily cite the, the source code in any publication that you use it for. So, well, we can we can read the content, content on this in the documentation, then what is on us? You are already aware of that. And we can see some, some of the simulations, some some simple problems that we have uh, been solving. So here we can see one problem to solve. There is a problem here with a with a figure. So that is one issue that we might try to solve in this workshop by the end of it. So and and here are some things too. So we can go to the static one misses. Then so okay. So this problem consists in two trust elements. Um, with three nodes, as it as it is shown in this figure, and basically the the load p is increased, and we want to solve the the problem and use and we will have to use a nonlinear analysis uh, algorithm. If this problem is static, so the basic um, the basic feature here is that. Uh, the basic uh, way of using the code is to download the, the, the script and run the script. We can use the documentation and in parallel, we are going to use also the scripts from the code. So here I have opened the, the documentation and you can see here script URL. And this is the, the URL of the script. And we will open this also in, in my computer. So if I go to the onsas.m uh, web, I can click here in code and click on download zip. So <clears throat> here I'm downloading the entire content. So yeah, so I can go to downloads. I can see here onsas.m master. I also can download any release previous releases here on releases. I can get the, the, the 
the source code zip file for any release. So in case in case that that in the current version there is an error or something is not working or I have some doubts, I can go and take a look or, or download a previous version and which I might be more sure how it works. So this I will extract it and I can yeah I can extract it right here. Um, let me see. Take that mission. Well, new folder. Fantastic. Oh. I could not see the button. Okay. So I extracted the contents to this. So what I can do is to um, I have the, the entire content of the, the code, then I can open Octave. I have the latest version of Octave. And I can go to that um, to that folder, which is, I guess, documents on SAS, on SAS master. Then I have the entire, the same content of the repo is here and I have downloaded it through a zip file. And I can open here the OnSAS example static bomb missile trust. So this is the, the script. I can open it in the text editor, which is integrated in Octave. So this the content of this file is the same as in the as in the um, in the documentation, what we can see here. So in this example, the static bomb missile trust problem. So that is what is exactly here in this example, the static bomb is a stress problem. So the content, like the content of this web page is extracted from this .m file. So any any line starting with percentage MD, it's, uh, it's a line which is exported to a markdown file. And any line which is not starting with percentage MD, it's a code file, it's a code line. So in this case, the first line, which is not starting with percentage MD is close all clear all, then it's this one. Yeah, you can, you can interrupt me at any time. Um, so, um, so now I can run this, change directory, yes. I can go to the command window. So I think it ran okay. Yeah. Oh, it worked. Uh, so it made the entire analysis, and this is the the plot of the results. Anyway, we can we can go through using the documentation, but as as I as I showed to you, it's the same. We can read this, or we, we can read the script file. I think this is more comfortable to read. So. So basically, um, in this problem, we have analytical solutions, analytic solutions. We have four different uh, strain measures for the for the trust element, and uh, so we have an analytic solution, and we will compute numerical solutions using answers. So first of all, um, well, this is the order of the, of the script. We clear the the environment. We delete delete variables. We set some scalar variables which are of interest for us, which is the young modulus, the cross section, uh, the area of the cross section, and some geometric. Um, X2 is a geometric uh, parameter which sets the X coordinate of the node two and the Z coordinate of the node two. So, <clears throat> and that is computed here. And then I start uh, defining some of the of the structs. So the 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 way that the onsas works is that we define some uh, what what is called a struct uh, or a array of structs, and um, and those structs contain all the information of of our model and the boundary conditions and and etc. And that is provided as input to the onsas routine, and then. Com uh, computes the analysis and provides the output. So I, I think that you're more or less familiarized with this, but I will tell it um, in a, uh, briefly. So basically we first define the materials struct. We set which is the, the model. In this case, 
there is only one um, only one uh, material struct is defined. Since we only have one material, both trusses, truss elements are composed are formed by the same material. So in this case, we have to set which is the hyperelastic model that we will use. And in this case, it's a one-dimensional rotate engine even strain. So this is a keyword inside the, 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 the onsets code. So if you want to, to, to see all the options, you can go here in the documentation in the left on creating models. Then on that one, we we can we can see before going to the script, we can we can see more or less which are these. So the, the basic uh, structs that we have to use are materials, the elements, the boundary conditions, the initial conditions, the mesh information, the numerical method information, and other parameters. So you can follow up the entire options, the, all the options that you have here, but I will go directly to the options that related to this example in this case. So the hyperelastic parameters are set to, in, in this case, for this model, the vector of parameters that I have to pass through are the Young modulus and the Poisson ratio. Then in this case, since it is, uh, this is a static problem, uh, there is no dynamic analysis, then the density field is not defined, but you could define that. You could set materials.density and set equal to a float number and that will set the density of the material. So then for the elements, so here we need to, we treat the nodes as an element. It's a different entity. So, so in this case, in this trust problem, we have two entities, which are nodes and trusses. So we have to set like a, a vector of structs. So then the first entry of that struct is elements parenthesis one and the field uh, and the field element type the element type of that of that first entry is node. So um, basically, I can run it here on the on the script. Um, let's see. We can go to the editor. We can make test here, for instance. So I can I can just return here and stop the the execution. Then elements, I can write elements here. So if I run this in the command window, you can see that <clears throat> you can see that it says, okay, elements is defined and it's a one by two struct array containing the fields LM type and LM cross check param. Okay, so the first, the elements, elements one is one struct, a scalar structure containing two fields, which are LM type, and the content of the LM type is the node. And the second one is LM cross-check params, which is empty. So I can ask for the first element, which is your LM type. Let me see, element, LM. There is elements. Yeah. Okay. So the result is node. And if, if I ask the same for the second LM type, uh, the second LM, the second entry of that vector of structs, the, re to reply, the, the answer is trust. Okay. So, so that's it. But it's like we have to make like the, like, the entire model before setting the, the connectivities and the, and the mesh of the, of the program. Then the boundary conditions is the same. We can go to, the, to this. So we, we will use only two boundary conditions. The first one will be a fixed point. And the second one will be for this second node, we will set that there is no displacement in the Y direction. So it's a planar movement, basically. So. So here, okay, so let me see. Okay, so we have the boundary conditions. I will set the first boundary condition for the fixed node. And in this case, another important thing that you can see in the creating models um, is the order of the, of the degrees of freedom. So we have six degrees of freedom by the moment per node. 
and this is the order where we in which we um, sort or yeah we we consider the the, the degrees of freedom for for each node. So the first degree of freedom is the force in in the x direction or the displacement in the x direction, and the second is the moment, uh, the bending moment in the x with a with a with a small finger in the in the in the x direction, and the rotation in the case of displacement in rotation. So the order for displacement would be like um, displacement in x rotation x. Displacement y, rotation y, displacement c, rotation z. So in this case, to set a point to be fixed, um, to be pinned, is one, three, five. So it's the, all the three displacements. And then the this, the imposed. So I, I will say, okay, the the imposed displacement degrees of freedoms are those ones, and the imposed displacement values are zero, zero, zero. Okay, so. That's basically it. In the case that we want to add some new degree of freedom, uh, for instance, temperature or another one, um, as we are trying to or thinking about to do, we could add some another some other number here, maybe a seven, and and also uh, impose another value for that degree of freedom. So the second uh, boundary condition is only setting the third degree of freedom, which is the y direction to zero, and that's it. Then uh, in the second boundary condition, so I am thinking of boundary conditions, like sorting them in thinking about assigning those boundary conditions to specific nodes. So the second boundary condition is the, is the boundary condition that I'm going to assign to node two. And the first boundary condition is the one I'm going to assign to nodes one and three. So the node two is submitted to a constraint uh, in the displacement in the y direction, but also has another another boundary condition applied, which is the load applied. So in this case, the loads are considered in the boundary condition struct. So the um, okay. So in the second boundary condition entry, I will say okay. The load core system um, first I have to set in which system I am going to introduce the loads. And in this case, it's global because I will use it. Uh, I'm introducing that way, and then a load time factor. This is a, a um, yeah a load factor which multiplies the load state or the load case, and then which is the load case or so the load the base values. Like so, the base values are these ones, which are um, minus one in the z direction. So it's effectively a load uh, pointing like downwards. And this is the load factor which is being multiplied by that load. So at time one, as it, as it is, says here, at time one second, uh, the value of that load will be uh, minus three um, times to the 10 to the, to the eight, okay. Then for initial conditions, since this is not a dynamic problem, we don't need to set initial conditions. And then we can go with the mesh parameters. So the mesh struct has two fields. The first one is the nodes coordinates, which, which is a matrix, simply as that, and has three columns. Each of the columns is the, the first one is the coordinates of the nodes in the X uh, component, the second one, the Y, and the third one, the Z. And um, each of the rows corresponds to the to each of the nodes. Then the first one, uh, the first node is uh, is then the zero zero zero, and then um, and then as as you can see here, and then it's like the, the x two and two times x two is the following one. So yeah, so that that is a typical coordinate matrix. Then we have to set the other field of the mesh, this is a very important, this is the key, I think, um, <clears throat> uh, data structure of the of, of onset, which is connect cell. So this is a cell, in this case is a five element cell that we already know that it's, it has five entries, which contains all the information, all the assignments to each of the, of the entities of the structure. So in this case, the first one is the first 
nodes and the order of this, um, as it is explained here, the first uh, number corresponds to the integer, is an integer number and sets which is the material for that entity or that element. The second one is which is the element. This is all related to the struct that we already defined. So we already defined one material, two elements, and uh, one, two boundary conditions and no initial conditions. So for the node, for the first node, um, as it is expected, there is no material for a node, so it's zero. There is one, there is a one in the elements, which corresponds to the first type of element, which is a node. Then there is uh, a one for the boundary condition, which corresponds to the fixed point, the pinned, and then zero because we don't have initial conditions. And the last number here is the connectivity, the nodal connectivity. So in this case, uh, it says, okay, which is the node or the number, the, the, which are the indexes of the nodes that corresponds to this, this entity, this element definition. In this case, it's one. And then the second node, the second definition that we make, the second elementary entity that we define is the node three. And as you can see, the node three, you can see on the figure, the node three is the, is, has the same definitions of, of node one. Okay, so it, it's the same, the, the maybe, the maybe, maybe, maybe or maybe parameters are the same. Then for the node two, which is the one which is submitted to another boundary condition, the only change is the, the, the B, the third index, which is number two, because it's the second boundary condition. So that, this is the only change. And also, of course, the number of the nodes. Then, then we have to pass to the trust elements. And in this case, we yes, we have a boundary, a material definition, and we, we don't have boundary conditions set for the element. And we have, we have a connectivity in this case. The first element, it goes from one to two and the second one from two to three, okay? Then the analysis settings, we set which is the method that we are going to use. This is also a keyword inside the code. Um, uh, in this case, Newton Rasson sets the Newton Rasson method, of course. And then to that method, we have to set some, um, some yeah, parameters. In this case, I mean, it, uh, even although that the, the, the analysis is not dynamic, we use the time as a um, as a label for for setting for labeling different levels of loads. So it's a kind of a quasi time. It's not a real time, but anyway, we use it as a as a indication of the progress of the simulation. Then the delta d here, the increment of time is zero dot one, and the final time is one. And here you can set some iteration. Um, Stopping criteria, yeah. So that that talks on that sets how how is the convergence and, and how strict are we going to be with the with the residuals of the loads and the equilibrium. Um, and then it's also important to set the BTK BTK uh, if you want to to get the visualization using Paraview, you have to set in the other params BTK and that's it. And then you can run onsas using this entire expression here on SAS and then use the arguments, materials, elements, boundary conditions, initial condition, mesh, analysis settings, and other parameters. And the output is by the moment, the output is very, very simple. We we have to uh, go on that, work on that. But by the moment, the only output is a matrix with um, columns, which the displacements, uh, each column corresponds to a time and also a load factors matrix, which has all the values of the load factors, which might be more than one for per each time. So, um, so we can, we can. I think we already run the problem. Let me see. Yeah, okay, we, we can run the problem anyway again, and we can see the, the output. Now then we can pass to the part of you at this, at this at this stage. So the analysis went well. Then I will start with Paraview. So Paraview is a visualization software, which is very, very powerful. Um, and we are using it. Um, let me see.
Okay, so this is the, the folder. And then you can, if you go to any of the examples, you can see that um, some of the some of the folders. So in this case, there is no output folder because this example has not been been run. So the only output folders or the only data that you will be able to visualize is that the other um, results which are generated locally. That is because we don't want to uh, upload all the contents of all the results of all the examples. So that is up to you to run each example and generate your results. So the first analysis we did was this one. Um, that's the one we explained. So I can see here after I open it. Um, so if you if you look at the first thing is to um, in the settings I have a, a um, auto apply uh, feature is here auto apply I I suggest you to do that. If not, you have to click on apply here on the left. And here you can see the fields which are def uh, defined in the in the data. So here I can see I can use a displacements field. Um, and in this displacement field, I can set here rescale data range to all over all time time steps. This is recommended. So what what this does is to rescale this um, this um, bar here, this data results bar, so that uh, during the whole simulation. So here on top, I can click on the next one to, to see all the all the deformations. So I have the 10 time steps. Yeah. So at the at the end, I can see that the red color, which corresponds to the, the maximum magnitude of displacement, which is um which is one. Okay. It's one meter. I don't know. It's a dimensionless. Okay, so here the elements are, and also the elements, um, I think they are circular. Yeah, the section is circular, more or less. It's a, this is a visualization um, uh, thing, but anyway, the, the problem is solving with uh, circular. And also you can, if you want, you can set the, 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 initial, um, the initial configuration and then compare all of the, all of, all of the formations. You can also save animations if you want. It's a good feature. You can test, you can use anim and set PNG files. And in this case, set okay and generate okay. Didn't work. Uh, okay. Okay, I had some uh, space issues, but no worries. Okay, so um, I, I want run the rest of the example um, but there are other cases which are run here which are executed here and and those the interesting thing is that we can we can um, like nest like um, get together different analysis settings because after doing this analysis setting we keep uh, these variables uh, the ones we introduced and we can only change the ones we are going to change uh, which in this case is the hyperelastic model and go for a linear case and, and the name of the problem and run it again. And then uh, we can we can make um, lots of things. We can make parametric analysis. Um, we can make uh, many, many, many interesting things. At the end of the script, you can see that there is a verification here, very Boolean. So in this, in this computation, there is a, a Boolean which is computed. Which is, which compares the difference between the numerical results and the analytical results. So this is one of the tests that are executed on answers. Again, as I mentioned before, uh, this green passing. If you tick here, if you click here, you can see tests details, and you can click on details, and then you can see all the, all the, all the this green light says that everything works well. And in this, you can see run mechanical work tests. And in this one, you can see test functions. And this shows how all the functions were uh, run. And in each of these uh, executions, the verif Boolean was computed and, the, and the, the verification was true. And then the solution was met. So it's, it's kind of a verification. So um, 
So this is the for the one misses first problem. I was going to show the Unix extension, but I am not. Um, we can we can check that out in, at, at some other time. It, it, it simply basically it's a solid problem with uh, non um, non friction contact boundary condition on the on the on the x equals zero, y equals zero, z equals zero planes, and some tension is applied. And in this case, we have analytical solution for the nonlinear geometric case. We can also here we can see in part of you we can see the the the, the greatness of the well I didn't run the, the example but we can see the the visualization also is very cool. Um, and in this case, we can see how to define by hand um, these meshes. And also, what I think is important that here. You can also see in this in this problem. You can also, if you want, you can try how to use um, GMSH. I already download GMSH, which is a great tool, um, in my opinion. Um, so here, if you download GMSH, you can go to this example and open the GEO file. And this geo file will show you the, the the geometry definition, and so in this geometry definition we have all the all the um, definitions that we want. For instance, these labels, we can see the surfaces, and each of the surfaces has uh, settings, um, some labels, and these labels are related to the MEBI parameters that I mentioned before. So um, that is a an easy way to that could help you to 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 see the, the the solutions, and here you can generate the meshes. You can generate and change the geo file content and and change the size of the mesh, and then generate meshes. And you can refine. And this is a very very powerful. You can see here the the, the refinement of the mesh, um, and then you can try and see how it works for us to solve this problem. Mm. Okay, so I think I'm done with that. Uh, I will show you very, very briefly a, a real life example, maybe. Um, so together with Bruno uh, Bassano, Marcelo Forez and, and me and I, uh, we worked with uh, the head of the wind tunnel facility here at the university, uh, Jose Cataldo, um, and did some analysis for a real building. Um, so I can show you some of the of the modes of the deformation of the structure, maybe. I think it is loading. Yeah. So we have the real building. This is the entire building, and you can see here the displacement, and you can see, um, yeah. So this is one of the modes of the deformation of the structure. So this is one of the modes of the deformation, and this is considering this. This is a model study which is made uh, for some wind effects analysis. And uh, what we did is to do a model analysis, and with that model analysis, we we performed some uh, dynamical um, numerical analysis, so that. Uh, yeah, this is the, the second mode. So these are model, model, uh, 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 yeah, model vibration uh, cases. So Onsas is able to solve large problems. In this case, these stiffer uh, beams represent like the, the elevators, the elevators boxes, like um, which can be modeled in Onsas. By the moment, we don't have uh, plates, but that's on the on the on the near future, I guess. Um, I can I will very very fast go to contributing use uh, contribution to ONSAS. So, as I said, Git is a tool for version control. Um, you can go to Wikipedia. Well, you have the URL of this. This is available in the in the in the ONSAS organization. You can go to here to ONSAS Talks, and here you can see the content of this presentation. So 
any URL that that you can see um, here is available. So yeah, so you can you can check that out. So any of the URLs that I'm showing here, Wikipedia and Git SCM, you can you can take a look at that. There is a lot lots of documentation there. But on this, I will I think that there are four levels of contributions for for ways of doing this. There is a starter, total starter, which is using the web interface. There is a beginner, which is using GitHub desktop and some text editor. Then there is an intermediate, which would be using some more uh, sophisticated editors such as Atom or Visual Studio or VS Codium, which is the open source alternative uh, for Visual Studio. And, um, and the level four would be like using command line. So using command line tools and typing all the commands that you will see on the documentation. So I will choose the level two way. Um, but so, so the first step uh, to, to contribute to this or any, any, any repository that you would like to contribute, the first thing is to go to the website to this website and click here on the fork and with in that in this form you can you can say okay the owner you will set your user i cannot do it because i already have a fork uh repository but then you will say okay which, which is the name you can leave it like that you can leave it like that and just click on create fork so in my case i already have a fork so i i will go to mine um so I can go to my repositories. So this onsas.m, this is my copy of the of the of the repo. Yes. So any changes I do here won't affect at all the contents on onsas.m main repo. And right after you made your fork, the, it will says here this branch is up to date with onsas onsas.m master. Okay. So this is. Uh, totally up to date with that. So the thing is that we can work on this and we have any permission to work on this. Anyone can work on its own repository. So the web interface way, way would be to like edit using, using um, for instance, I can go uh, get any, any of these examples. I can go here and I can click on, on, on the pencil here, edit. And using the web interface, you could edit here, okay? But I guess that that is not um, the most comfortable option if you're going to do some big uh, additions. So my alternative is to use GitHub Desktop, okay? So I already installed GitHub Desktop. Um, I think I already, um, I think that in some way it recognized me my user uh, maybe you have to log in with your your user to um, to make it work so then you can click here on clone a repository from the internet um, and you can choose which is your repo and i will write on sas.m and then you can see my jorge pz pz uh, on sas.m and this is my fork and i will say clone I click on clone, cloning answers, receiving objects. So it's downloading the content of my copy of the of the repo. So how are you planning to use this work? So it, it, I mean, it's a, it's a assistant. No, it guides you in the in the in the in the path of this. So I can say, okay, I will try to contribute to the parent project, which is answers answers or maybe just for my own purposes, and it helps you with with these um, ideas. So basically, what what we will do is we will uh, work on the master of this, which is a copy uh, of the onsas the master, and maybe and we will do some changes. Those changes will be packed as commits, and those commits will then be. Uh, transfer to the parent project via pull request, which is here. Pull request targeting onsas onsas.m will be shown in the pull request list. Okay, so maybe I can click on this um, 
I can put on continue and that's it. I can click on continue. And that's it. So I have already uh, copied. If you click here, current branch, it shows you that you're a master and you're a master and current directory, you can see that it's Jorge Bizet. And this is the symbol of the fork on sas.m. So I am on my fork. And here you can click on fetch origin and fetch. It's a, it's another git command, which is to like to synchronize with the, with the, with the web. So each time you make fetch, it will bring changes or it will realize about which are the changes made on the web and bring them using a pool. You, you will bring those changes to your local copy. So basically we have like three copies in, in this moment. We have like the, the, the parent onsas.m web copy. Then we have the fork, Jorge onsas.m, which is on the web too. And here I have a local Jorge onsas.m. So it's like, that. that's the most complicated to, to, to get, but basically it's like that. So I will open some text editor. I already have this one. I am using Genie, but you can use anything you want. And here I will do some small change. Uh, for instance, here I inserted, I inserted a blank line, no, or here. I, I, I added a separation line here. So it's a very tiny change. And if I go to GitHub desktop, so these are two separate programs. So I, I did a change in my editor, which you can use anyone you want. And if I go to GitHub desktop, then it realizes that a change was made and it says there are uncommitted changes in this repository. So, so what I what you have to do, I have, here I have a list of changes. And what I can do is here on an update on such static promises, I can write the content of my, my change as test change. This is kind of a title of the change that I'm doing. And uh, well, I can add co-authors to the commit also if I want, but if not, I am the author of the change and then click on commit to master. So I am committing this is a commit which uh, pack packages one change in this case. And this is committed to, to the master of my fork, my repository. So, okay, so now already the assistant uh, realizes that I have one change in my, as it says here, you have one local commit waiting to be pushed, pushed to GitHub. So this, small change is not uh, on the web. It's not yet, let me see, on my fork. Yeah, this is my fork. So as you can see here, my fork is still, this branch is up to date with onsas. So this fork is, didn't, didn't realize that I did that change. So in order to do so, I will click on push origin. I can click on this button or I can click on this one on, on top. And if I click that, push into origin, fetch in origin, that's it. So if I click here in the left, I can click on history. It's very interesting that you can see the entire history of the repo, in fact, not only this, this is the last one. On top, you can see the last change I made, but you can, you can see any of the changes that we were doing. Uh, uh, I don't know, today we were like working on the, we're working, <laughs> On some of the yeah some 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 errors on some errors on the on the forces on the on the user load for, uh, forces um, yeah so this this you can see all of this you can see all the history and it's a very visual and very simple way to to take a look at that so they are I already pushed so here I will refresh this web and now I can see. This branch is one commit ahead of onsas onsas.m. Okay, so this is ahead. So there is a change which is uh, in the future. I mean, it's like there is one more change which is not in the onsas master. So in order to contribute that, here you can see this contribute. This branch is one commit ahead of onsas master. Open a pull request to contribute. Your change is up, upstream. Upstream is like 
um, upstream is like for to the parent uh, repository. So I can click on that. You can you can of course you can do it by yourself right now. Uh, we can we can take a look at that. But then now after clicking on pull request, I am on the it moved to to the parent website, and now I am on onsas onsas .m and comparing changes it shows me from which to which branches are this going to be is this going to be so the the, the arrow so on the right you are going you can see uh, the source and in the left you can see the target so on the on the right you can see that the head repository the one which is uh, containing the new changes is jorge onsas.m and the and the branch is master, and the target or the base repository is onsas onsas.m. And here you can also see that there is indeed there is one commit, there is one file change, and there is one contributor which is me. And you can see the change. And the change is indeed as as we uh, did, only one blank line uh, added. So here I can create pull request and create pull request again. So it will be generated, I guess, at some point, yeah. So it was generated. So now if you go to the website, to onsas.m, you will see this. Um, well, we have 10 forks now, so we have a new fork. So, you can see here that there is a test change, which is the, 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 the new uh, pull request that I opened from my fork. And you can see also this orange, uh, some important, important thing is this orange, um, uh, yeah, here. Here, you can see this orange circle, which is represents that the testing has not been finished yet. So for, even for the simplest change, all the tests have to be uh, completed, have to be uh, passed. Everything has to be okay. And many things will have to be um, verified. One review should be required. For instance, I could say, okay, reviewers, I can ask for a reviewer and I can choose someone to review this. So I can say, for instance, maybe Mauricio. Okay, so please Mauricio, review my 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 change my test change so mauricio has a orange circle there and so when when he has any time he will try to review it and give me his contribution if i don't if i don't get an approval i cannot do the merge and simply as that so i can see pending reviewer mauricio was requested for review and did not did his review yet and then, uh, and then I have to have all the conversations resolved. So some conversations might emerge, some questions, and those questions are also going to be through these files. So that, that's also interesting that Mauricio could be uh, looking at this and can, can say, okay, this is wrong and, and start a conversation on something. And that's very, very interesting. Yeah, so he, he Mauricio wrote, please change uh, line 43. So he's requesting for some change. He's not approving <laughs> yet the, the, the change. So he's, he's requiring me to change something. Um, so I, I, I need to change that. Oh, or we can discuss here. Okay, so the idea would be, um, I don't agree. So we, we can discuss here and, and fight here. And, and and comment and and react on each other's um, on each other's uh, comments or, or whatever and, and 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 this is where the discussion happens. So the PR the pull request is the main the main the main um, feature on the on the the main focus on the on the country on the how is it collaborative development. So. Okay, so well, so this will be running, um, and it's important that this is running on a server. So it's important that these tests are not so computing expensive, so it doesn't take 
too longer to too long to to solve the the test. So um, well, yeah. So we did already the small contribution. So yeah. So we can <laughs> we can go by to the interactive part, um, and then to the to the to the Mauritius example. So thank you for this, and I will stop recording.